Hello everyone. In this session, I am going to uh, give you a brief introduction to R, wherein my major agenda is to cover what is R, why do we re really need to use R, why should we not use R, for what purposes we are going to use R and for what in what cases R is not recommended and when is generally R used. So this is what we are going to talk of, a very simple session, very small session. So just to get an initial overview, what is R? Let's understand it's a programming language. There's a very common mis misconception among people that it's a statistics program. It's like SPSS, it's like SAS. But no, it is not. It's a proper programming like language like a C, C++ and a Java. Right? It is a proper programming language. It's not a statistics tool like SPSS, SAS, Minitab or for that matter any other. So it's a language. But a lot of uh, usage if I am getting into statistical computing. If I want to do some kind of interesting graphics, charts, probably it's a very, very powerful tool. But first of all, it's a language. So if I have to really do very in-depth, very, very advanced statistical analysis, probably it is the number one choice in the current world. And much more than that, it's open source which means I, it is primarily free to use, right? When we are talking about using programs like SPSS from IBM or even SAS or Minitab, they are all expensive licenses. The licenses for each of these products are pretty expensive. But on the other hand, when I'm looking at R, it's primarily open source. And users like you and me, they can contribute to the development. So whatever is the base R that has been developed by the R community, this base R is extended by people like us in the form of packages. Any one of us can create packages and again upload the same packages for the benefit of others into that same library into the website we can upload all these packages which is uh, the repository is called as CRAN I'll be talking about it soon so you visit this particular link cranrproject.org web packages today you could clearly see that there are heavy more than 8500 or projects that are packages that are available which are extending the basic R which is developed by the R community with additional core functions and highly specialized methods. If I want to do the uh, analytics relating to financial data. I have so many packages that are already written by various experts. I want to do a marketing analytics on marketing data, doing customer segmentations, etc. I have different packages which are addressing that need. I want to perform some kind of econometric analysis on the data. There are a good number of packages that are helping us to do this. So. A lot of domains are typically integrated into the R functionality which are extending the base R functionality which are catering today to multiple domains. That is where R has become a much more powerful tool compared to any other softwares. Right? Then, why R? Today, it is the major platform of choice for statisticians. Earlier statisticians used to use either SAS or IBM SPSS or similar kind of products. But 
nowadays there is a good move of the statist uh, statisticians from those traditional programming languages to the world of r and any new innovations happening in the world of statistics you are able to see that those are getting translated into r programs very very quickly because any user can typically create such kind of uh, a program and he can upload it to the cran network so uh, instead of waiting for that new innovative method coming into a sas or spss when they release their next new version we could see that much much faster when we are looking at the r repository so that's one more reason learning r is a very good choice nowadays because of its open source nature almost all the universities their statistical departments they are starting to use r for various uh, various tests various modelings and various other statistics related activities and nowadays even this is spreading to other disciplines even econometricians started using r quite heavily even uh, in various other disciplines like psychology etc also it, r is replacing many uh, existing tools that are uh, that are being used so there are good number of analytical tools that are there in r so with the growth of business analytics so as the business analytics is uh, started to grow even the r as a tool also started to grow widely and more popularly and it really helps us to write different analysis that i can reuse so write once and reuse in different sets of data i can create my own packages right or use someone else packages which are more and more domain specific and the other good thing about r is almost on all operating systems it is compatible it can connect to almost any kind of a data system whether you call as sql or oracle or any other kind of data system microsoft excel even with spss sas it is quite easily connectable so sql databases all of them are quite comfortably even with xml it can quite comfortably connect so that's one more advantage offered by r and the graphing part of r is simply phenomenal right so there are a few packages probably like ggplot2 it's a package exclusively dedicated to the graphics functionality we have a package called lattice again dedicated to the graphics functionality so very beautiful and powerful charts can be drawn through r i can create different informative and tailored graphics which if i have to create them in spreadsheets like microsoft excel it's much more time consuming and it may not be that robust as i can develop them in r so even from that dashboarding reporting kind of a perspective it looks like r is much more a preferred choice compared to spreadsheets so in short if i have to put it in a couple of lines r is really increasing the overall predict uh, productivity of the analyst lot of things which had to be which had a lot uh, a big learning curve earlier now with the usage of r the work is happening much much faster and if you look at the job market as well one of the most valuable skills today the skill that is highly in demand especially for someone who wants to look at jobs in analytics at almost all the top companies the knowledge of r is being considered by the industry as a very uh, apt knowledge for analytics related jobs and more of the more more than everything else we know that r is free it's an open source software so no issues of licensing and all that kind of a stuff and the code of r is inspectable though i can use the package of someone else uh, i can even inspect 
what is the logic they have typically written as a part of that particular package i can see i can validate whether the package that they have uh, created is solving the business functionality as per my requirement so even that is great it's not a black box it allows you to dig deeper look into the logic and see if that logic is more appropriate to your requirements so a lot of great uses right now having considered a lot of positive about r now i want to talk about why not r as well first thing r is not a drag and drop tool like spss or microsoft excel r it is simply it is simply not a menu driven kind of a tool right the user interface for r is not that great so which means unless i master the language even very very simple analysis like taking a mean or computing a a, a a simple descriptive statistics it looks more and more cumbersome so the learning curve compared to the traditional menu driven tools like uh, ibm spss or microsoft excel the learning curve here is slightly high right i have to master it for a few days until i get a basic hold on it but yes once i get a good hold on the programming language part all the analysis looks like more and more simple to use but we need to understand r is not about point and click deliverables i can't use my mouse and just drag something or look at the menu and just click on it to perform a particular function it's more about power it's more about flexibility various ways of solving one problem right various techniques built into it it's more about control if i have to repeat a particular process on an iterative basis it's the tool of choice and the new innovative methods that are coming in various disciplines they are getting created as packages so probably you have to understand r is not about point and click kind of deliverables it's more about all these things that it brings in and let me tell you you have to start enjoying programming if you want to if you want to enjoy r you have to start enjoying the programming part it's not good if you don't enjoy programming if you are new to programming you want to learn it probably r could be a good starting point but if you have already done programming earlier and did not like it and don't want to learn it then there is no other alternative you can't get into r straight forward now the other place where r is not getting used today is especially with very large multinational companies so they are skeptical saying that it is an open source so the common question comes from these big organizations is if it is free how can it be good we understand that a typical triangle if i put the cost if i put the speed and the effort right so i could really see from cost dimension it is much much cheaper it's good it serves all kinds of functionality but the effort that it requires to typically master it is slightly more higher so we have to see a trade off some of them could be much faster much easier to learn but they are very expensive so it's a kind of a trade off that we really need to get in especially what kind of technique i can use what are my priorities out of these three and it's uh, at any point in time i can i can do a particular tool or a package can do well on two dimension but it may i may have to sacrifice the third and one more place where i don't look at using r is it's slightly unpredictable i know there are 8500 packages today that are there 
but how many of them are reliable they are all developed by people like you and me they are not they need not be fully tested there is no one from the r community who is testing all these packages separately so it's a kind of a trust that we are taking with that trust we are using those packages and if the results are pretty much unpredictable that is where it could be a negative and more than that especially if r changes r keeps on the r community keeps on changing its version right probably uh, at least 2 uh, to 3 versions a year now all the packages need to be compiled for the new version they have to be checked for the compatibility with the new version so all these things if all packages keep doing at constant intervals of time and if they are trustable no issues but the packages if they are not reliable that is where our business results could be affected so that's where again a caveat tempter kind of phrase may have to be used it's up to the user to determine what kind of methods you want to use whether a particular method that you are choosing is really suiting to your requirements or not so this is where overall also if i say there are so many positives compared to the negatives but yes before we take up uh, an interesting study on any of the practices it's better to have a comparative approach of both the positives as well as the negatives then just to talk about what is the what are the best occasions when should i use r especially when i have to look at more and more newer techniques of solving a problem and those techniques which have come into the market very recently not been incorporated into various traditional tools like sas and spss i'm sure you'll find a solution for them in r because the moment things are getting innovated we we see that their applications are being found in r so this is one place where a large number of users are getting started to understand r and use r r is a powerful software for iterative kind of applications one single function repeated on hundreds of uh, data sets so where iteration plays a very important role probably using r is quite an efficient kind of a process i have multiple data sets one single analysis i have to apply on multiple data sets i have to do automated reporting on multiple departments multiple data sets probably this is the tool of choice and if i have to do if i have to get into developing a new analytical technique or i want to get an in depth insight into a particular technique probably this is the tool of choice so there are quite a good number of advantages quite a good number of places where r becomes the unique choice for the user overall if you appreciate the pluses and minuses and take it forward understanding r is going to do a big big uh, 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 is going to do a big big advancement in the world of business analytics so this is what i wanted to look as the basic introduction to r these are the various areas that we have covered if you have any further queries regarding the same you can very well get in touch with me by giving me a call on the number that i have provided below or you can send in an email at vamsidhar@facegurus.com thanks a lot for listening to this uh, session thank you very much